In this episode, we hear from successful engineer Alicia M. Morgan about how she chose her career in aerospace engineering, how she overcomes failure, how to break into big aerospace companies like Boeing, and how you can follow your life purpose in engineering. All that and more coming up. Hey, 1% Nation, I'm Jake Voorhees, and you're watching The 1% Engineer Show, where we empower young engineers to rise to the top 1% of their career. If this is your first time to the channel, guys, make sure you subscribe because I release videos two times a week for engineering success. And if you want the 1% Engineer Kit and access to the Facebook group, follow the link in the description. And if you have any questions in your engineering journey right now, comment below and I can make a video just for you. Thank you so much, Alicia, for doing this interview. It's five email questions that I have repurposed into this video for you guys. I'd like to give you guys Alicia's bio before we begin. Alicia is an award-winning executive leader and graduate from Tuskegee University with a bachelor's of science in aerospace engineering and a master's of science from New Mexico State University in industrial engineering. Committed to lifelong learning, Alicia has maintained leadership excellence by being a K through 12 STEM and STEAM education advocate and outreach individual. Her professional engineering experience involves working for Fortune 500 companies like Boeing, Lockheed Martin, and Raytheon Engineering. She is also a JREV International Global Arts Education Fellow, TEDx speaker, conference presenter, author, blog writer, Toastmaster, and more. So thanks again, Alicia. And without further ado, let's get right into question number one. Alicia, how did you find your career passion? How did you know aerospace engineering was the right route for you? Alicia says, growing up, I was always inquisitive about the why and the process of doing something. Thing. My parents recognized this and placed me in various STEM-related after-school and summer programs. I was the kid who wanted to organize things as a mini project manager, even in elementary school. My entire career has been about soaring into the unknown, fully prepared or not. Naturally, because of my love for soaring the unknown, aerospace engineering was the best fit for me. I chose to attend Tuskegee University, a historically black college and university, which is still the only HBCU with an accredited aerospace engineering program. And overall, among all colleges and universities, Tuskegee is one of the best schools for aerospace engineering. So keep that in mind, you aspiring aerospace engineers. Now to further my love and appreciation for processes and improving them, I obtained a master's degree in industrial engineering from New Mexico State University, which was the next level for ensuring my success. I would also like to say there have been various mentors and friends which have been critical to my professional development who were confidants when I have fallen short and failed along the way. Thanks for all that, Alicia. I really like those insights about aerospace engineering. I like that analogy about soaring through the unknown. Maybe you guys can relate to that. Question number two, Alicia, you have accomplished a lot in your career so far, but oftentimes young engineers struggle and they feel like it's only them who face failures and hard times. So Alicia, it hasn't always been the case for you about overwhelming success. Tell us about your biggest failure moment. Take us there. Tell us that story. Alicia says, what is the common thing that we have all heard while growing up? Study hard, work hard, and you will become successful. You don't hear about how even with the best intentions, we can and will fail along the way. Alicia says, my greatest challenge was my last corporate job in receiving back-to-back poor performance reviews. I was devastated, frustrated, and at the time I did not have a solid board of directors and mentors. I had to overcome a lot being an introvert, learning how to advocate for myself, and knowing my own strengths and values. In my TEDx talk, it's my story of overcoming failure and learning from the wisdom of my grandmother who told me that one day it would happen. I could not understand and kept asking myself, what was the step-by-step -step process of overcoming this situation? You know the scientific method for it. My mentor said while I was preparing my TEDx talk, quote unquote, you should read about the growth mindset through Carol Dweck. I'm glad you mentioned this, Alicia, because I love that book. Alicia says one of the answers was accepting not knowing and just doing things to constantly stretch myself. In this day and age, you must be a lifelong learner. Don't think one degree or certification will be enough to remain marketable in this fast paced, technology driven world. That is great advice, Alicia. Thank you so much for that story. It's nice to hear about how people rebound from low moments and keep going, keep striving to be successful. Question number three, Alicia, you have worked for some big aerospace engineering companies, Fortune 500 companies. What tips do you have for young engineers to break into companies just like these? Alicia says the best way 
way is through internships prior to graduating and finding ways to connect with industry leaders at those companies. She says she interned at Lockheed Martin because of a connection from someone to a vice president in the organization. Again, guys, look at what Alicia is saying. It's always about who you know. It's always about who you're connected to. I love this. Alicia continues to say her first job out of college was at Boeing. And through a career fair at Tuskegee, there were interviews on campus. And eventually, I was flown out to Seattle for more interviews and a tour. Additionally, your alumni network at your school is your greatest asset for building social capital. Alicia continues to say that social capital is a currency, so make sure you're adding value just as much as you are asking for from someone else. She also suggests to join a professional organization centered around your STEM career focus. Question number four, Alicia, you are very passionate about bringing the A into STEM and having a STEAM focus, which means a creative and artistic fusion to science, technology, engineering, and math. What advice do you have for young people today to bridge the gap between engineering and creativity? Alicia says to embrace the power of collaboration and to get in the room with people who do not necessarily look and think like you. This past summer as a global arts education fellow, I was part of a STEM plus arts integration conference through JREV International. It was uniquely designed for educators, artists, scientists, programmers, and creatives who believe in the power of the arts to engage and enlighten, to get together and share best practices. After the conference, a STEAM and arts integration anthology with practical insights and applications was released. I'm happy to say that I'm one of the co-authors, including my chapter on deeper learning through STEAM plus arts integration. Congratulations on that, Alicia. That's super awesome. She says you can find out more about the organization and anthology at jrevsteam.com. So you guys should check that out for sure. Additionally, she says she has recently become involved with an organization called Talk STEM. The organization does a great job of getting students to see the STEM and arts in the outside world. Debuting earlier this year in the spring, Talk STEM has a new initiative called Walk STEM, which is a community outreach program in the Dallas Arts District who created a partnership with the National Museum of Mathematics in New York. The program consists of free guided walks designed to engage elementary and middle school aged children and their families in learning how math is alive in the world all around us. I love that. She says she has enjoyed giving these guided tours and it forces you to realize STEM and the arts are both a part of the design process of some of the great architectural designs. A STEAM career starts with the belief and taking the action to incorporate creativity, innovation, and the arts in whatever you do. There is no straight line in mapping out how to get there. Thank you, Alicia. My interpretation of this is that if you want to have a creative arts fusion in the STEM worlds in your engineering career, then you need to get involved with these organizations that incorporate the two that lead with a STEAM focus, not necessarily a STEM focus. And they're around, they may be new, but they're popping up all over. So try to get involved with these just like Alicia has done. And question number five, Alicia, you have done a great job of following your purpose in life, being an educator and advocate of STEAM and STEM and helping out the younger generations of engineers out there. What tips do you have for engineers to follow our true purpose to make the best impact that we can have on this world? Alicia says, a part of your mission as a STEM professional is to be the best critical thinker and problem solver that you can be. She says, after my bad performance review situation, being laid off in the engineering field and then starting a new career in nonprofits and getting fired, I was constantly learning to improve. I took a step back and after talking to several successful people, I realized that what I had gone through was not in vain. I have been fortunate to become involved in many college and workforce readiness initiatives for after school programs, high school and college programs, and so on. Daily, I can share the gaps that I know exist in the STEM field. Passion, purpose, and eventually impact can be developed from your own career pain points and then you can decide to make it your mission to solve these for others. Overall, I would say that taking the road less traveled and owning your uniqueness for the way in which you solve problems helps you stand out the most. Dare to be different. It literally pays off. Thank you so much for those awesome responses to these five questions, Alicia. If you have any questions about these responses, comment below and I'll make sure that those get answered for you. I hope these stories from Alicia and Morgan helped you guys. If they did, consider subscribing because I release videos two times a week for engineering success. And if you guys wanna follow Alicia, you can check out her website, ammorgan.net. And as always, thanks for watching the 1% Engineer Show, guys, and stay hungry on your quest to become a 1% engineer. Cheers!